Hey, okay. So, uh, several of you have been asking for an update and or recap of what's going on with the medical stuff, and sometimes this is just hard to explain um, over text just because it's been a long journey, and so um, I thought it would be easier just to do a video recap for you guys. But, um, so, uh, back in April, when, um, let's see, it was April 13th, I was feeling fine one mor that morning, and literally by noon, I did a, like a live Facebook for my business page, and uh, I was feeling really good. I went to Sam's Club directly after that, and was trying to grocery shop, and I remember being in the rice aisle, and just felt like being hit, like I got hit by a Mack truck from behind, just of pure fatigue, like so exhausted I couldn't even move. Totally collapsed over my basket. They helped me get out to my vehicle. Ultimately, I had to wait there for 20 minutes before I could convince them, one, to not call the ambulance, and two, that I was safe enough to drive home. Um, so I finally get home. Justin practically has to carry me up the stairs. I'm so exhausted. I end up going to bed and stayed in bed for like 18 hours. I was so tired. You guys know I'm in a chronic insomniac. I don't sleep. So um, as that whole first week, I started just... Um, I slept so much that first week, uh, but then I started, you know, there were some specific symptoms, specifically like the red and purple um, coloration to my toes over the banding, over the uh, the um, knuckles, uh, so those COVID toes, uh, loss of sense of smell and taste, shortness of breath, very tight chest, dry cough that was really unproductive that week. Uh, body aches and, and this immense fatigue that's really hard to kind of describe to people just how utterly exhausting I mean like lifting up a fork to my mouth was just insane so there was a, a section of time where Justin just made smoothies for me because that was all I could manage to just swallow smoothies um, that kind of uh, was riding out and I was really worried about the symptoms of it especially because of the loss of sense of smell and taste and then um, I did not have a fever though any at any time during that time so I kept contacting with my doctor ultimately we decided why not go ahead and call the COVID hotline we did they said come and get a test went and got a nasopharyngeal swab and it came back negative we're like okay so we kept cruising just healing resting isolating at home four weeks later I'm starting to feel good I made a trip out to the garden and to go check on my rabbits and then uh, Justin sprained his ankle and we switched bedrooms which his bedroom is downstairs so I added stairs into the equation which is what I think set it off it was just too much energy for me to expend in one day and I um, <laughs> just it was like a full-on crash all over again week five hit with all the same symptoms except for um, so they ultimately they have me seen at the respiratory clinic again where I'm walking from their exam room to their x-ray machine and the second I get up to start walking and walk to the x-ray machine my oxygen's plummeting down they have little pulse ox on me my oxygen's plummeting down into like the high 70s and I'm just major headache dizziness I had to take a break and stop and they were like what is going on and so ultimately they sent me directly to the ER because they didn't like it where the ER found that I had insanely high blood pressure like um, 220 over 120 uh, tachycardia, just extremely fast heart rate. I mean, I'm sitting here like I was like this in the ER, and it was at 160, which is not normal. Okay, guys. Um, uh, that major headache and dizziness was not going away. Um, uh, yeah, so they started just getting me stabilized, really, over there. And they got the heart stabilized with several different heart medications on board. Um, they did a lot of testing, MRIs, CTs, everything comes back fairly normal or, or fine. Um, my MRI showed minor T2 hyperintensities and um, like my abdominal CT showed that I had a fatty liver. Um, it's not because I am a drinker, guys. <laughs> um, it showed that I had a fatty liver and then my uh, kidneys showed that my right one had some um, stenosis going on with it. So. Ultimately, they were just piecing together all the symptoms, and they really haven't found a root cause. So they can they can name or diagnose the symptoms, like the supraventricular tachycardia, like uh, POTS, POTS-like symptoms, or viral-induced POTS. Um, 
but that they really haven't found the root cause. They suspected Cushing's for a while, but I have such um, weird labs going on with the hormone panel that they don't know that for sure. Um, so ultimately they can't really diagnose and pretty much nothing more. It was a goal of stabilizing me so that I could go home. The problem is I could not walk without just collapsing uh, out of just pure fatigue or being so dizzy that the room is so disorientating that I can't get my bearings. And so I was using a walker. I was at like six or seven steps and doing fairly good with that. Um, and then so they said, okay, let's transfer you to a skilled rehab center, which is where I'm at now, this lovely hospital. It's a hospital with um, rehab attached to it, not a nursing home. Um, some skilled care is purely just a nursing home. And that just didn't really fit this young of a patient, okay? <laughs> I'm not old enough to be in a nursing home. <laughs> Anyhow, so um, week seven, they went ahead and transferred me here. At that point, I really could walk those six or seven steps. It was just really fatigued and very dizzying. Um, the ambulance ride over here was awful. Oh my gosh, I, man, I chucked so many times that day. <laughs> Those poor EMTs, good job for them. Um, it really took me out for the rest of the day, and then I had the weekend to kind of rest because PT and OT doesn't work on the weekends here. Well. Monday morning comes along and we get cray cray up in here. Okay, so let me show you. So here's my bed and my desk, which is full of all sorts of stuff. So this is where I'm at. And then over there is my door. I'm talking less than 20 feet here, okay? Just between the bed and the door. It's not a long walk, okay? So we start walking, doing this walk with the walker. And I'm like, yeah, I got this, I got this. Um, yeah, I had to sit down like six or seven times in the wheelchair so I didn't pass out. Uh, I barely made it to the door. It was extremely exhausting and they ended up uh, stopping at the doorway and uh, wheeling me back to the bed. And I went back to bed for the rest of the day. Like, I was toast. So the following day we tried to take a shower um, and it was, got cut short. It got cut, sh cut in half and it was extremely dizzying and um, man, I could not get my bearings and I was so utterly exhausted. Um, that was two days of tasks back to back that were fairly hard and I think that's what kind of hit this spiral down. So that was Tuesday. By Tuesday night I was feeling pretty whooped. Wednesday physical therapy I tried doing tests with them and they noted that my legs were significantly weaker. Um, that my arms were doing a lot of the work and my arms were strong but that the legs were definitely starting to kind of fail. They were buckling, the knees were buckling more and stuff like that. Um, and then by Wednesday afternoon, they noticed that my left leg was drastically worse and my right leg was still trying to keep up, but that the left one was, um, pretty bad. The numbness and tingling in my extremities were really starting to fire up now, the legs and hands up the arms. Um, so my left leg, Thursday morning we woke up and my left leg was completely paralyzed and... Um, I still had feeling in my right leg, um, but the tingling sensation was still in all my um, arms and, and legs. Um, so basically over the next week of time, this is week over week seven and a half to eight of being sick, the numbness and tingling has since spread up, up the whole left leg and now crossed over the whole pelvis area. Can't use my whole pelvic area at all, like it's just my old friend the catheter is back and you know how much I love my catheter <laughs> so um, the, I've lost all sensation down there a pelvic everything everything is just gone the right leg um, is still operational the toes the base of the foot and up the right side of the foot is now numb and tingling and I can't um, I can operate them I can't feel me operating them though um, so we are kind of moving along with that, with that, hoping it doesn't continue to spread because that's no fun. Um, but as of a couple of days ago, it felt like somebody like poured vas poured gasoline in my veins and then lit it on fire. So now it was just numb and tingling and now it's just utter pain in my legs. And so, um, we've added on a couple of new medications to hopefully try and reduce that. Um, it, it started only coming in waves that were like 30 to 45 minutes at a time. Now it's grown to like hours at a time. So pain meds really haven't touched it. Um, they're actively spasming um, the muscle groups along the leg. And um, 
actually a part of that spasming. We're not really sure what it is, but um, there's this like clenching, almost like a Charlie horse, but it's a huge Charlie horse from my toe tips all the way to my glutes. One long log of my leg just turns into this stiff Charlie horse of a, of a seize of all the muscles. And um, they, they don't really know what to call this because it turns into a whole symptomatic thing of the leg does this and it's usually a really good indicator for a seizure-like episode. We don't really know what to call it, but essentially my whole body goes, checks out. Like my, um, my eyes get fixed onto one point and um, all, of, all of the muscles in my face and my arms and legs start twitching. Um, it started on just the left side, but then now it does the, all over my whole body. Um, and it's, I was only out for like 30 to 90 seconds in any number of these seizure things. Um, and then after it kind of goes away, when it, when it, my brain comes back, um, it's, it's a weird feeling. It's like an immense feeling of like fear washes over me or maybe, maybe adrenaline. It's definitely like a, <gasps> I gotta run, <laughs> fight fight kind of uh, response and so but it's just a whole complete collapse my whole body collapses out from underneath me most of the time I'm laying um, or sitting so it's not like I just like flop over like a fish but um, the body goes paralyzed happens between 30 and 90 seconds and and then I come back and it's this wash over feeling of fear or adrenaline or whatever you want to call it and then it's a barrage of symptoms after that literally like nausea and vomiting and I've been running really hot in here like the room is at 64 and I feel like it is freaking 90 degrees in here clearly it's not so um definitely there's something off there but when I have these episodes it is like a complete switch I have so I am so cold it chills me to the bones cold like I can't warm up they bring blankets in to warm me up they put the heat pads on me nothing warms me up for for a couple hours um and i spike a fever during this time too which i've never i don't have a fever during any of the rest of this sickness it's just after these episodes um so i get those cold shivers that i just can't shake and uh, each episode is so short but the after effects last so long it can sometimes be just five hours or sometimes 18 hours like it just depends on i don't know what point is these episodes are killing me as far as the fatigue afterwards it is even worse than than when I first got sick I am so lethargic afterwards and I have some serious brain fog going on um I so that started last Saturday along with um on Monday I started having very difficulty swallowing um the speech therapist came and evaluated me and said really wasn't like I was truly aspirating on food it was more like just sheer muscle fatigue within my throat um, that the exhaustion the muscles themselves are just genuinely fatigued which is also how the rest of me feels um, and so uh, it just takes an immense amount of focus for me when I take a bite of food to try and not choke on it and so it, sometimes it takes two or three times swallowing um, or, and so she gave me a bunch of tips about swallowing with my head tucked or turning to my weak side, which is the left side, and swallowing when I'm turning. Um, so she recommended a swallow study, but ultimately it's going to be come down to how um, giving my body rest in between meals instead of trying to do one big meal, do smaller meals, taking rest stops in between meals, and just acknowledging the fact that I'm getting tired easily which is really weird for me because I don't do that <laughs> but I've been following her tricks for the, this morning's um, breakfast and then today's lunch and dinner and it went surprisingly smoother um, I did just did smaller portions and I stuck with only wet foods that were pretty soft and it's been really smooth for the most part a very concerted effort of being smooth but it was smooth nonetheless so that's ultimately where we're landing on the health side of things. Um, we have had some um, we've we've had some good news. <laughs> we've we have. <laughs> Let's see. Let's think positively. What's happened that's positive? Um, oh, Justin brought the van to the hospital, and they allowed us to do a couple of uh, wheelchair to van transfers, and I was able to do those. 
they did end in a seizure thing. Um, but uh, I got to stand up on the parallel bars today as well. It also ended in a seizure. Okay, that was not positive, Jeff. <laughs> What's positive? Okay, we were able to collect a walker and a wheelchair and a gate belt from people in the community, which was amazing. Um, Justin is making a step stool for the van to get into to make it easier, and he made a slide board for me to transfer on things. Um, that all is going to help immensely with vehicle safety and mobility, and just mobility moving all around the place. Um, so we feel extremely blessed by the community with that. Um, I don't honestly know what any of this means. I, I have some pretty strong guesses of what's going on. Uh, I'm just waiting for it to actually be confirmed. Um, but we are very blessed because we did get appointments up at Mayo. Not only did we get endocrinology department, we also got neurology. Which you guys, that often you have to wait for three or four months to get into them for neurology. And so a, an appointment opened up on Tuesday and it's back to back with my endocrinology appointment. So we're going to head up to Mayo Clinic this Sunday and uh, kind of just see what they have to say about all this. Oh. Anyhow, so it does mean that we had to use uh, the hotel that was attached to the hospital as opposed to the ones that's a little further out, which we've always used in the past just because it's cheaper. But with the amount of uh, dizziness I get from just motion and um, knowing how much we're going to have to just rest and wait in between each appointment, we thought it'd be better to just have the one that's attached. So that's what we're going to do. And it'll be good. We've had uh, we've had a couple people uh, th uh, throw some cash our way on on PayPal, and um, that has been a huge blessing um, to date. And uh, those se several people with gift cards to Aldi's and stuff for groceries and that for the kids, which has been great. And so uh, we do truly feel blessed by the community around us. Um, yeah, despite all the yuck, people have really pulled together for our family. So I am. So grateful for that. Um, plus, I have insanely fun nurses, okay? You know, Nurse Trixie chucked peanut butter at me, had a water balloon. I told her got her back with the whole, you know, what they tie your arm off with before they grab blood or do an IV or something like that, a little tourniquet. I totally was, like, stretching it. I'm like, hey, Trixie. I didn't actually slap it on her, but she jumped a mile high, and that was great. Um, but she came back when I described my legs on fire. I was like, my legs are on fire. And... She came back in the room with a fire extinguisher. She goes, the nurse before me said your legs were on fire. <laughs> so it was just really funny. Tomorrow she comes back to work, though. And because she's coming back to work, I am prepared. <laughs> just to drop off some silly string. So I'm going to attack her tomorrow before PT. The other nurses are helping me. So it's going to be epic fun. <laughs> All right, you guys, this journey isn't over. And it's crazy, stupid hard. Um, but if I'm staying positive, y'all got to stay positive. And we're going to choose to find joy in the little things because that's how it rolls. Like sing silly string in your ears. <laughs> Ultimately, I appreciate your prayers. I appreciate the support. The actual boots on the ground support is more helpful than you guys will ever know. Um, and so, yeah, that's my health, health and world update right now. It's not a whole lot of progress, but it is, that's not true. It is progress. I'm going up to mail. That's progress. So we are one more step closer to figuring out what's going on. So I'm going to just ride in that and wish you guys all some, uh, just be blessed and uh, be at peace.